Hi everyone, it's Don from Crux Seminatus, and this time I've got a Sons of Horus uh, Land Raider from Forge World. It's the Mark II B. Uh, this one was an eBay rescue, and I do uh, like to rescue a wreck. Um, the person who had built it had made a bit of a hash of it, although they had some great ideas about putting studs along the top and extra bolts um, on the doors at the back, which I thought was a really cool idea. Just the um, the main uh, building of it wasn't great. So the two main colours that we're going to use is the first one is Lupercal Green, which is the base colour from Citadel, and then, no surprise, it's Sons of Horus Green, which is the layer paint version. But first things first, after I filled in all the gaps, um, I had to prime it with uh, Vallejo Black Primer, um, which is the, the standard airbrush primer that I've been using for about 10 years now. Um, I have to pick up some of that Steino res that everyone bangs on about, but uh, I've never tried it just yet. So the most important thing, getting a nice even coverage and don't forget to have your fan on because if you if you don't turn the fan on, you get wacky dreams, um, which isn't an endorsement for wacky dreams, by the way. Just wanted to warn you. Okay, so um, what's so special about this Land Raider? Well, um, it did have Death Guard um, iconography on it when it arrived on eBay that I hadn't noticed when I bought it. Uh, and that's why there's two uh, panels, uh, two circular panel gap things at the front. It's like uh, the re residue of glue. Um, so I took them off um, and I'm going to try some zenithal highlighting here to give you the idea of where I want the light colours and the dark colours. So this is effectively pre-shading done with white into the black. So the um, Holding the, the tank is the at the right angle is important here because you don't want overspray going on to the other areas. So you can see I'm shooting kind of down on it, um, but I'm trying not to get the, the white on the surface until I'm ready to do that. So basically it's brightest at the top and it kind of goes down towards shadow. I know that it doesn't really look like that in real life, but for painting a model of toy soldiers anyway, it looks a really effective way of giving you um, easy contrast. So brighter at the top and darker towards the edge of the panels and uh, towards the, sorry, darker towards the bottom and at the edge of panels. So here we go with um, Lipico uh, Green um, from the base. I really, really, really watered this down with airbrush thinner, uh, more so I think than I've ever done before. And I didn't have any problems with dry tip or anything. So that's the way forward. You know, I used to watch all these videos of people painting things and go, oh, why do they never get any drama with their airbrush? Well, that's why. So you can see my thumb it also looks good in uh, that colour of green as well. But lots of um, airbrush thinner. Uh, so to the consistency that it was nearly water, you just have to be careful you don't overspray it and it goes, um, you know, flying all over the place. So nice, tiny, thin coats are the answer to this. And you can see there, you can see how it just changes colour under the light as I'm giving it a really, really quick coat. It's nothing difficult here at all. And to be honest, if I left it like that, I wouldn't actually be that unhappy with it. It looks pretty decent. That's the pre-shading really paying for itself there. It looks brighter at the top, darker at the bottom, and darker towards the ends, at the edges of the, the panel lines. So it's almost time to go to the highlight paint, which is uh, coming on now. And you'll see as well, this is the uh, Sons of Horus layer paint and it really does uh, look great when it goes on and you can see it just brightening up the, the darker panels there. In real life it's actually quite dark um, under these really powerful lights that I've got. Uh, it does kind of look a little bit lighter but I really liked it anyway. It's kind of what I'd seen in my mind's eye when um, I th thought about the Sons of Horus from the days when they were still goodies before they became the baddies. So if that doesn't get you leaving a comment then phew, I don't know what will. So anyway, right, okay, so uh, where are we? So you can see how fluid that is in the reservoir of the, um, the airbrush there and it's taking your time. Loads of small, um, careful, thin layers will build up over time to give you a really, really, really decent effect. If you just go full on spray modes, all you're really doing is replacing one base color with another. So the trick is to leave some of that base color um, exposed and you'll see there, it looks really, really bright, but it's, it's because these lights are super bright. So it, it looks okay. Trust me, you'll see it in a bit and it looks all right. 
So next up, we have um, or the sides. That's right. Just to, to show you that if you add this into the pre-highlight, um, you get a really, really, really good effect. And when you start doing things like highlighting, um, and the your eye kind of just it, it kind of soaks it all in together. I know some people would use a filter here, but um, I I didn't think it needed one. I just thought this was the the right kind of paint scheme that I was going for anyway. So I, I paint out the uh, the panels, one at the front and one at the back with uh, just flat black. And off camera, I go and airbrush some dark sea grey, uh, which is a Vallejo model uh, air colour, into the panels uh, just to give them the black a little highlight. And then, as you can see, I've cut out a piece of uh, Fisk paper uh, with the icon of the, um, or the sigil, I suppose, of the Sons of Horus. And I'm just spraying uh, Games Workshop Retributor armour uh, on here. Again, just trying to build up in nice little thin layers. I put one on each side, one at the top. So when you see it like that, I think it looks really, really powerful. And all I'm doing in this shot is I'm giving it, giving it a coat of gloss varnish. Um, and after that's done, I start filling in the details. Really, the the main work of this has already been done. The the two colours, um, of green and just a little bit of black, make all the difference. All I'm really doing now is just finishing off all the details. So that's how quick and easy it was to do. You do not need an airbrush to do this. You could have done this with a with a normal brush. Um, I just happen to have an airbrush, so that's uh, that's why I do it that way. The studs are actually uh, jewelry beads. Um, that have been sort of half drilled in, so they stand out proud. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool, actually. Oh, me knocking over a bottle of paint there. Um, and I'm using um, some neat dark sea grey just to do edge highlighting with the black, just to make the vents and everything stand out a bit. My um, Vallejo liquid gold um, is sadly not long for this world um, but I there was enough of it usable to pick out all the gold details and of course at this point in the history they are uh, none more loyal um, so they are uh, all about the uh, Aquila and uh, being loyal to the Emperor and again nothing exciting now we've got the, um, the varnish layer on it's easy just to do um, a wash for all the rivets and all the the little uh, hatches and stuff and it's just pure numb oil straight from the pot you, you can use um, oil and uh, white spirits and stuff if, if that's you know if that's what you want to do it's no problem at all it's just numb oil it's the same consistency all the time and it's pretty easy to get your hands on so that's why I used it here and I'm just using um, Vallejo air silver just to pick out the um, veteran studs on the, the roof uh, and it's just painting the eye lenses I, I thought red would make a nice contrast with the green so I, I just pick out a standard three color red lens um, and that was red orange yellow and a little dot of white at the top uh, this is something I've not done for a while, Streaking Grime. Um, it was a, a MIG product. I'm sure they've got a million different versions of it now. When I got that bottle, there was only Streaking Grime. Um, and the one thing I have learned through lots of experience is less is more when you're doing these things. It's easy to get carried away and it just doesn't look very realistic. So, you know, there'll, there'll be a loose bolt somewhere on a tank or a JCB or anything like that. But they're not all loose, otherwise it would shake itself to, to pieces. And this is me just, just doing the um, the, the writing. Um, I I come back and I neaten this up, but it does say uh, X company, because I wanted it to be Loken's um, company. Um, I got a soft spot in the lore for Loken. Um, so it's his, uh, it's, it's his company's baby, this one. And what do I do here? Oh yeah, that's right, I, I draw an Aquila. Um, I'm rubbish at drawing freehand stuff, but um, it shows you what you can do if you've got a slightly bigger than normal parchment. 
you know, have a bash. You know, the worst you can do is is make a mess of it and paint over and start again. It won't take you very long to, to redo that. So have a bash and see how what cool designs you can come up with. I do uh, an Aquila, I do 16 in Roman numerals for obviously the Sons of Horus. Um, I draw some symbols on one and I just do broken lines just to be text for the rest of them. This is German camo black brown. I'm not even bothering with a palette anymore, I'm just sticking it straight on my desk. And um, with a sponge, I'm just going to do some sponge chipping to make it look... I want to use it to look damaged but not like a wreck. You know, some people love weathering tanks to the point where you know they, they look like they, they would struggle to move you know I, I ding them up a little bit and you can see I put some weathering powder on there already um, but not covering the model it's just enough to, to, to sell the idea that it's seen a bit of action but it is still well looked after oh that um, silver uh, cross thing was a shield that the guy had or the lady whoever it was that had built this in the past uh, had stuck on there I thought it looked okay so I just kept it and once you do the uh, German black brown, you come on with uh, either chainmail silver or a bright silver of your choice and kind of go over the, the same spots. So this is the um, the truth, as I named her. This is what she looks like when she's finished. And for me, this was a model that was kind of intimidating for some reason. I think any time I've bought a Forge World model, um, I'm always hypercritical of myself because it's Forge World and the last thing you want to do is pay Forge World prices, get a model and then not do it justice, which is something that's held me back for years, if I'm honest, absolutely years. And if you've been on this journey with me, then I'm sure I've made mention of this loads of times. So um, things that I that didn't take very long that look quite cool are the parchments and like the lenses and things. I really like them. The channel is almost at 4,000 subscribers and, you know, we'd really, really, really appreciate it. If we've produced any content that you've liked or given you a tip that you've used or just if you've liked the banter, uh, please, please consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends um, and please help us get to, to 4,000 subscribers. It would really mean a great deal to Rodders and myself. So thanks everyone. Thanks so much for your support. Cheers now. Bye-bye.